Hi, welcome back. So this video is an update to the previous one, which was all about the 10 print one line programs and variations on those. Uh, the, these programs basically just they print out infinitely changing uh, mazes on the screen and you can just leave them running and they'll go on forever, uh, supposedly. What I want to try and do is show an update to that where we look at what I think is as optimal you can get the basic program, watch that run a bit and then show the assembly version of it which hopefully will run a hell of a lot quicker. So this is um, this is a basic program so we've done several things in this to make it uh, run faster in basic. Uh, for a start um, the main part of this loop, uh, this go to loop is uh, on line zero. Uh, we've got rid of all spaces out of this as well. Uh, we use dot um, instead of zero uh, in the parameter to the random function using variable names rather than uh, constants as well, which we set up all them um, in line 20. Um, and we have got one uh, left there, but hey, I think it's minimal. Uh, difference anyway that makes maybe like you know like half a percent difference in speed but um yeah so a quick run through in program anyway so we've got to do run 20 to run this uh, because that does all initialization and just does go to now go to without a number just goes to line zero and that's supposedly slightly quicker than um than doing go to and then a number uh, so line 20, so the constants, 181 is the base character for this maze. And what we're trying to do is add up to 3 to that uh, to give us horizontal and vertical bars. That's a Petsky character, not an ASCII character number. Uh, we've got colour, so we've got base colour 7. Um, I'm setting the uh, background colour and border colour to um, black, so that's 0. So these are two pokes for that and we want to set the um, text colour to random colour as well and that's what this poke 464 int random 0 times colour plus 1 will do. I've tried various numbers for colour and it seems to give you like nicest output if you set colour to 7. So what we're going to do is run that and show you that executing. See. You can actually clearly see, obviously, each character being drawn and then the next line appearing. Um, just let it run a little bit. And uh, what we're going to try and do then is uh, load up the assembly version of that. So I'll just stop the program and load the uh, assembler. I'll just pause the video while I do that. So a quick uh, run through on this program in the Turbo Macro Pro Assembler. Uh, this is the origin of the program. So this is where when you load this into memory, it'll, it'll go into 828, which is a cassette buffer. Just a small place to put um, machine code programs if they're not too big, which this is really small. So this is uh, initializing the SID chip. Um, into generate a random number so Robin at 8 bit show and tell his channel did a video on this where he did the, the original temperate um, program with a backslash and forward slash and I'm basically reusing bits of code out of this um, in particular that part and down here in this loop though I've sort of deviated quite a bit so although I'm still getting the oscillator 3 output um, what I'm doing uh, is ending it with 7 to mask out the upper 5 bits so that will um, hopefully give us a random number uh, between 0 and 7 which we store in uh, 286 which is the text colour uh, this is the equivalent of what we saw in basic as uh, 646 and then we get the oscillator output again another random number and uh, this time mask out the upper six bits uh, so that should give us number between 
uh, 0 and 3 inclusive and add that to uh, 181 which is a character number and again this is this is stored in register A still because all these operations are acting on the accumulator uh, jump subroutine FFD2 that's uh, to print a character onto the screen and then we just jump back to loop so this is an infinite loop so okay so um, that's a quick run through the program I want to do this assembler, so it's back arrow 3 on this uh, assembler. I can simply just type S to start. And there you see, so that's, that's running the machine code versus program. And yeah, you can easily see how much uh, fast that is. It's just sort of, you can't even see uh, one line being printed. The character across one line you can almost just see a smooth scrolling up screen. So yeah, I thought that might be interesting to some people um, who are interested in these infinitely generating mazes. And um, I could almost sit here for five minutes and just sort of get mesmerised by this. Uh, but there you go. So, and seeing as uh, it's well worth having an action replay uh, cartridge on your Commodore 64 if you've got one. So that's what this is down here. Uh, it's a action replay um version 4.2 uh, so if you got one of those um, when you've had enough of watching all these random mazes appear you can just press um, the reset button on there the right hand button and that'll just jump you back into basic um, it's worth knowing also that that's not actually zeroed any memory so if you do 32 sys 32768 you go straight back into assembler and actually, in general, this is, appears to be quite a fast way to edit and uh, and run programs uh, that you're using Turbo Macro Pro Assembler, um, which, you know, it's, it's not too bad. It's obviously probably quicker to on a PC, apart from the fact that the keyboard's completely different. So it's quite good using the proper Commodore 64 with its keyboard, which all the characters are in different places. Character mapping is different to the PC. So anyway, thanks for watching and uh, bye for now.